Welcome Cryptopians to Total Crypto Updates, bringing you another video for real deep dives into the crypto industry. I can't promise to only speak about crypto, but I can promise everything will be overstood. Let's dive into today's very dense crypto update. Let's start with Google's adoption of blockchain and surprisingly now taking payments in crypto. At one point they would block ads that advertised cryptocurrency. Now it seems like Google has changed its mind on crypto. Coinbase Commerce offering will allow some Google Cloud users to pay for cloud services using a variety of cryptocurrencies. Coinbase Prime will also offer Google with institutional-grade custody and trading capabilities. Google has the transaction histories of the Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Scash, Hedera Hashgraph, and Dogecoin blockchains, which can be accessed using BigQuery, a multi-cloud data warehouse. Coinbase will use Google's Compute Engine's machine learning capabilities and fiber optic infrastructure to give trading insights backed by big data analytics to an ever-expanding client base. Coinbase will also employ Google services to assist in the development of its exchange services and the migration of particular commerce-related apps from Amazon Web Services to Google. The Hedera network makes advantage of Google's premium, low-latency fiber optic network to assure the Hedera distributed ledger's reliability and maximum uptime. Hedera's public testnets are also hosted on Google Cloud. Google has not said which cryptocurrency it would take. It prohibited ads for initial coin offerings, crypto wallets, and crypto exchanges in June 2018, alleging considerable consumer damage. In a July 2022 policy adjustment, Google said that any firm that allows for the exchange, purchase, or ownership of cryptocurrency was not permitted to advertise on Google. Advertisements for cryptocurrency exchanges are also permitted in Canada, the United Arab Emirates, Thailand, and Hong Kong, according to the business. Advertisements for exchanges and wallets, on the other hand, are authorized in Israel, Japan, the United States, France, Germany, the Philippines, and South Korea, all of which are subject to Google certification. Bitcoinmagazine.com on a podcast Bitcoin Magazine Live has released a video with P and Chris stating the obvious. Open your eyes and ears for this bullish sentiment. Here's a clip. And the fact that even in the depths of this bear market where the price of Bitcoin has crashed, you know, by over 60%, the fact that major entities as large as Google are conceding to Bitcoin, they're bending the knee to Bitcoin is fucking massive. We've never seen that in a bear market before. We've never seen companies that normally and historically have shit all over Bitcoin at the time when Bitcoin is ostensibly at its lowest being like, fuck, we can't deny it anymore. It's undeniable. We got to bend the knee. We got to, uh, you know, kiss the ring and accept Bitcoin as, as payment. That's huge. Incredibly bullish news. I'm extremely excited. Um, what do you think, Chris? I just want to know, are they holding or are they selling? Like that, that's, you know, is it they accept it and convert it to US dollars or are they, are they hodling it up? Uh, obviously, I prefer them to hold it, but, you know, as Q always points out, we do not need more large corporations hanging on to Bitcoin longer. So if they want to sell to me, I'm a buyer. So eh. excuse the language. Now on to ApeCoin. ApeCoin, a coin airdrop to holders of Board Ape Yacht Club, BAYC, NFTs, dropped by 10% overnight. According to Bloomberg, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is looking into Yuga Labs, the firm behind BAYC NFTs, to see if some non-fungible tokens are more analogous to stocks and should follow the same disclosure regulations. On October 11, the Financial Stability Board, FSB, an international organization that provides recommendations for the global financial system, released a series of studies and documents that made crucial remarks and high-level suggestions for the cryptocurrency business. The report consists of a 77-page PDF reported on the FSB website. I will leave the link in the description. As for a quick recap of the report. The FSB said that the disparity in the categorization of crypto assets by member countries is an issue. The FSB argues that since crypto assets provide comparable economic activities to conventional financial products, they should be governed similarly. When things go wrong, the decentralized structure of crypto initiatives leads to a lack of transparency and responsibility. 
In addition to the absence of proper governance, the FSB questioned stablecoin projects' promises of price stability, considering that certain stablecoins rely on other crypto assets as an alleged stabilizing mechanism. The watchdog has also taken note of the many capabilities provided by crypto businesses, whether they are a brokerage or a DeFi exchange, such as lending or staking. As a result, a proposal has been made to member countries' financial authorities to guarantee that these enterprises are regulated and do not take on more risk than they can handle. Brian Roberts, the chief financial officer of non-fungible token, NFT, marketplace OpenSea, is the latest high-profile Web3 executive to leave their position. In an October 7 LinkedIn post, the former chief financial officer of ride-sharing platform Lyft and OpenSea stated it was time for him to come ashore from the open seas, but he didn't specify why, just that he would remain as an advisor to the firm going forward. Notably, Robert's exit coincided with the resignation of another OpenSea executive. Ryan Fauti, vice president of business development at OpenSea, announced his resignation from the company in an October 7 LinkedIn post. Fauti said that the firm has gone a long way from its humble beginnings in co-founder Alex Atalara's basement and wished his crewmates well. The IRS and FBI have apprehended a hacker who stole millions of dollars in digital assets from a hardware wallet confiscated by law enforcement in another instance. The crime is noteworthy because it happened from a Bitcoin wallet built by a hardware device that was physically in the possession of law enforcement officers. Gary Harmon, the accused hacker, reportedly took Bitcoin from a separate lawsuit made against his brother, Larry Harmon. According to government authorities, he passed some via coin mixers. Finally, he transferred some funds into BlockFi in order to make loans, including a $1.2 million USD loan authorized by BlockFi. The feds claim Harmon used a seed phrase to remotely drain money from a wallet produced by a gadget in their possession. Larry Harmon is accused of money laundering conspiracy, running an unauthorized money transmitting firm, and sending money without a DC license. The DOJ also claims that he ran the Darknet cryptocurrency mixing service Helix from 2014 to 2017. Larry was also accused of running a search engine called Gram, which allowed people to look for unlawful products and services. Users might pay their fees with Bitcoin using the Helix mixer. However, that mixing service was unable to prevent Kynalysis from tracking transactions that aided in the investigation. Helix is accused of laundering $311 million in digital assets by law enforcement. At least one hardware wallet containing money for Helix was taken over by law authorities. A Trezor hardware wallet containing money tied to the Helix coin mixer case was confiscated by law enforcement. Investigators were unable to get direct access to the Trezor wallet since they did not know the passcode. They could, however, examine blockchain data and track payments to addresses reportedly owned by Larry Harmon. Trezor wallets, like any other hardware wallet, create a seed phrase that may be transferred to another device. Gary may have used the seed word to reactivate his access to at least part of their stolen cash and drain it. Larry denied knowing anything about the wallet at a court appearance in 2020. The presiding court was skeptical of his assertions, and it was speculated that Larry may have passed the seed word to Gary at some time. The court ordered him to turn over the passes. Gary, Larry subsequently alleged, had taken the money. In Larry Harmon's case, the jury rendered a guilty conviction. The decision included civil fines of up to $60 million and up to 20 years in jail. Larry promised to testify against his brother and other darknet operators as well. Gary Harmon's case will go to trial in February 2023. That will conclude today's update on trending news in the crypto world. Remember, the social media platforms will be up and running next week. With the last channel being deleted we must now start over. Don't forget we have a $50 giveaway for when we hit 200 subs and followers on all social platforms. We also raised the giveaway for 1,000 subs on YouTube to a $200 giveaway. Don't miss out, all you have to do is like, follow, subscribe and tag as many people as you can. We will be watching who tags who in keeping tabs on which one of those tags actually followed and subscribed. I repeat, 
this is not a random drawing. Anyone can compute the giveaways themselves. Good day, good night, and goodbye.